Uh, first to our guest today, uh, best known for her hugely successful career as a news presenter, which spanned over 20 years. This past year, she has turned her focus to the war in Ukraine and even hosted a Ukrainian family at her home. And her good work doesn't stop there, as she's now working with a charity to raise awareness of the experience of child refugees. Please give her a very warm welcome, Natasha Kaplinsky. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did. I did. Well I did. recovered, <laughs> I know. We should always say to people, mind, that's all mind we do, but you just step. forget. Yeah. How yeah. are you? I'm great. How lovely. This is fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's always fun. Um, really interesting, because I was talking to you um, when we were in makeup that the family that you, you took in have j literally just left. Literally they? this weekend they've oh. packed up. Oh. After 10 months they've been with us. Oh, wow. um, and so they've moved around the corner, so they're all part of the local community. The children are still going to be going to the same school as our children. Yeah. And um, yeah, they, I think they, they've moved on very happily. It's 10 months, it's a long time. It's a long time. I mean, this was the, the Homes for Ukraine scheme, which we all heard about at the time. And just seeing there's so many thousands of people displaced, it was heartbreaking. But not everybody either were able to or, or wanted to offer their home. What made you and your family want to step forward? The minute the scheme opened, I d do you know, I didn't even consult my husband. I just immediately registered. And I think that was so... Um, it was a, a, a scheme that just touched so many people in this country. I think it crashed within a few minutes yeah. of opening because there is such generosity in this country, people just wanting to help in times of crisis. So I literally didn't think about it, so I literally registered and... Um, it it took quite a while to get connected and so I just started a little um, WhatsApp group and eventually found the family that did come to us. And, so this uh, was mother, father and Mother, father and two children, two children. Mm. and then informed my husband and our two children. <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> they were coming. What was their reaction? Oh, no, I think they were just as happy as I was yeah. to be able to open our doors to strangers. It felt really exciting being able to be that generous to complete strangers and we really went to And town. they must have felt very nervous, did they, when they when Well, they I arrived? collected them from from um, the train station with one suitcase between four of them. Um, wow. And it was very hard for them in the middle of the night, like so many millions of Ukrainians, they literally just got up and left. And uh, they crossed the border into Poland and eventually managed to uh, find some sanctuary there. And from there, they made their way over to the UK. Mm. Uh, but it was exciting welcoming them. We, we really... Um, but like Colin said, very difficult for them, mm. very scary for the children. But you say it wasn't just you and your family, the whole community was were joining in to make them We're very lucky that we've got some space. So we had an annex that we were able to welcome them to, but so many people in the community wanted to help. And so there was a lady who was amazing at cooking. She made Ukrainian food and wrote all the recipes and the cooking instructions out in Ukrainian. And, and people sent clothes and presents. And we really tried to make that particular family feel very, very welcome. But that story is amplified around the country. Mm -hmm. And there were four million Ukrainian children that were made refugees with the invasion of Russia and that's only 10% of refugees around the country for uh, around the world 40 million children are refugees mm. and you think about how perfectly we try to micromanage our own children's mm. lives and you think what that must feel like to be parents of children that literally overnight have to pick you up say their you, suitcases you know, and you've go. You've helped this family, they've now moved <coughs> on, still staying locally, mm. and found work, the children are still at school, uh, but now you've teamed up with Save the Children to highlight you know, the plight of refugee children worldwide. That's right. Well, I've been an ambassador for Save for a very long time, um, but what's lovely is that we've just released this really rather beautiful film that Ardman Productions have created, and it just shows the experience of being a refugee refugee child. It's an orange circle that arrives into a purple world. Nothing makes sense to this orange circle. And then eventually uh, the worlds collide and in the end the world becomes much more colourful. And we know this, that actually it's a reciprocal arrangement. It's not just about us receiving refugees and giving kindness. They also, you know, contribute to our community and they make mm. our world a much more diverse and interesting and um, productive mm. place. Mm. 
I mean, you've got such a kind heart, though, anyway. I just wondered, like, where that come from, because your father, he was a political refugee, right? That's from right. My, yeah, from both my parents are South African. My father was a political refugee, um, you know, as standing up to the apartheid regime. Eventually, he received his passport back when Nelson Mandela was released from prison, and that was the first time my parents ever voted in an election, because it was the first free and fair election in South Africa. Um, and then I grew up in Kenya, and so I think you know, feeling um, how and experiencing how <clears throat> some communities are really did give me a sense of privilege and constant guilt that I live in, um, in a world where we feel mm. safe and that we are able to feed our children and, you know, open opportunities to our own families. So yeah. I'm trying to you, make it a bit equal. You give things back, though. I mean, you know, so it's not about guilt, but what I do love about you have to say, is you have alpacas? Oh, my gosh, like, the alpacas are the <laughs> centre of my world. Those that have alpacas, we have I know, we've got here. that synergy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So how long have you had them? Oh, from the beginning, in fact, they moved into our... We moved out of London about ten years ago, and they moved in the day after we did. I didn't have anything in place for them, but I was so determined... You mean... <laughs> Hang on, they didn't this, move is into another house. Example. <laughs> this is another example, Natasha, yes. of you... Taking a decision, not bothering to tell your husband. <laughs> yeah. By the way, yes. we've got a couple of alpacas. Yes. Got oh, but can, that, can I say, this has happened on multiple occasions. <laughs> not we've got just lots with... of animals. Yes, yeah. we've got 41 wow. at the moment. Wow. That'd be wow. you. Wow. Yes. That's but it, okay. it, it slightly, you know, COVID had got in the way because normally my husband travels quite a bit. So whenever he was away, I'd get another animal and then, <laughs> and then they'd be there and there's nothing he could do about but it. Aren't you breeding them? Aren't you breeding them? I, I did breed them. Did you them, tell yes. your husband about that? A very, very, very um, <laughs> expensive, um, rather attractive stud called Booze Down Elector that I paid quite a lot of money for to come and impregnate my alpacas. <laughs> and I did it on a day when I thought Justin was at work, and then he was like, oh, I think I'll work from home today. Oh. I was like, no, <laughs> not today, not today. But, yes, Booze Down Elector is, um, yeah, quite a man. Really? And, did, did, <laughs> and did it work? Did it work? It did, 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 yes. We've got some beautiful creas. Baby alpacas Aww. are called creas. We've got one called Princess Pearl. Um, <laughs> they've all got crazy names, obviously. Um, but Princess Pearl was separated from her mum a bit too early, so uh. she had to go to the vet with seat belts in to get fed every day. So oh. she's now got personal space issues. But I mean, <laughs> I'm very happy with that. Called she called Janet. Just... <laughs> <laughs> when I came to work this morning, I had to look at a picture of Colin. Goat. Oh, I had two goats. <laughs> I yes. How many have you got? <laughs> <laughs> Steady. Steady. That's Hang that's on a minute. A life is. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Remember. <laughs> complaint of her. <laughs> Listen, always have to ask you yeah. about Strictly only because yes. you were the very first celebrity winner. Yes. I mean, that seems like eons ago. Yes. Do you still watch? Do you still love it? I love watching it. Do I love dancing in public? No. Really? Of course, you are a strict Everyone thinks you're going to come out and start well. ballroom dancing all I know, this is the problem. No. But um, our daughter had a, a variety show just before Christmas and she took in the Strictly trophy and managed to break it. So <gasps> I'm just going to have to go out and try and win it again. Yeah! yeah. To get the second yeah. trophy. They could probably do a winner's Champion show. of champions. Champion oh, champion. oh, I did that yeah. once before and realised I was the old one at the back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's such a it's much oh, bigger show. Oh, and yeah, it's very different. Now, oh, I'd, I'd last week one now, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Listen, we, it's always lovely to have you on. Um, it's so lovely for, for that lovely family who were oh, welcome to your home you. and um, you. taken in by you and your whole community and are now doing so well. And we wish you luck with the, uh, the Save the Children campaign. Thank you very for much. The refugees for everywhere. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.